the encounter in the dream with me. In the physical, their life will turn upside down. They will become wayward. They will have spirit of lust in them. A lot of them can do what you cannot even expect them to do. Some of them even end up looking for money through negative means. And again, when I was growing up, I noticed that anything I put on, if I wear clothes or I, I have a hairdo and a woman admires it, to the extent that the woman will go to do the same hairdo or buy the same clothes to put on, that woman automatically will no longer be the same. So what happens to them? Is it that they are initiated or they are they're initiated. just destroyed? They are initiated. They are initiated just and by men copying you. Yes. Your hairstyle or my your My hairstyle that dress. time, my dress. And if you see the thing, I, I won't even see the type of clothes that I wear that will attract them, but they will just feel attracted to it. Mm. So you mean there is an evil power on you that attracts them to whatever is you know, your appearance? I believe so. Okay, so tell us men as well do men come to you and when they come to you what what is your encounter with them so many men are come uh, they come to me up till now at this age men still troop around me but so many of them that came to me when i was younger for marriage especially for marriage if you come to me for marriage i turn a lot of them down so many of them and so many of them up till date have no wife. Some that have wife ended up not having children. Okay, tell us once again, what are the things that these men see in you that attracts them to, to, to keep running after you? I don't know, maybe that power. Which of the powers? The eyes. Uh -huh. So you mean after they come to you, just by proposing to you, they are destroyed? Yes. Tell us what they will get obsessed with me and you know obsession leads to negativity obsession leads to destruction so what will begin to happen in their life in their business they will their become marriage? their business may not be touched but their life their marital life they will not have a steady home some will never marry a lot of them up to six of them today they are not married so how many men can you count that have been destroyed because of this demonic power in you that seduced them I had so many suitors, so I cannot count so many of them. There are so many. Okay, tell us more. What, what other power and uh, how has this power, uh, I mean, destroyed others? I have power in my mouth. That one and the one in my heart is so destructive. The one in my mouth is that if you dare provoke me, if you provoke me, it is better I tell you that, see what you've done to me. And when I tell you that, I will expect you to say, I am sorry. Immediately you say, I am sorry. It's over. But if you provoke me and you refuse to say, I am sorry, to acknowledge that you provoked me indeed. To the extent that if I dare cry, I dare shed my tears, it's over for you. You have problem. And to the extent that you can die. Hmm. Okay, so tell us what other power you are. Okay, before you go to other powers, can you tell us how, give us some instances where you have made pronouncements to people who offended you, who hurt you, and what has happened to them? Can you give us one, two, three instances? Okay, the first one was at the age of 11. After the appearance of that fair lady, a girl lied against me. She went to my mother and told my mother that I did something that I never did. I told my mother to bring that girl. My mother brought the girl because already my mother had started seeing the real me. She's always afraid of me. At times she even tells people, please, don't provoke Judy. Don't provoke Ijoma. That's my native name. So my mother went and brought the girl. I asked that girl, can you repeat that same thing you said? The girl repeated it before me. Although the girl was afraid when she was saying it. I told her, you know, you never saw me and I never did this. And you are still standing before me without any fear to repeat it before me. Go. If I did it, you will leave. If I didn't do it, I give you five days. And the girl stayed four days and she died mistressly. Okay. And the second one was somebody that... Hit my 
I file in the office. That time I have married my husband, I've gotten children, was already working. The man collected my file, a big man. He hid it. I went to his office three times, knelt down, begged him. On the third time, I begged him with tears. I was crying, begging him. I know my file ended up in your office. Sir, please, can you bring it out? The man said, get out. That, what do I think I have that other women don't have? That I don't play ball like other women do. I said, what kind of ball do you want me to be playing? The man said, I'll go. Go and keep that thing that you are keeping. This file, you will not see it. I said, sir, for having said this thing, I give you two months. You will not stay in this office to see that file. And when you leave this office, the file will come out. After one month, the man developed boil and died. Okay. So do you have any other instance? Yes. Okay. Another one was uh, another man, a big man, so to say, that removed me from my position. I went on, begged him, he refused. I kept on begging him, he refused. I went to him again and told him that I give you five days. The governor has said I should reinstate me and refused. Five days. If you fail to reinstate me, you go out of this office. And after it, you will never smell any position again in this state. And if you touch me again, you will die. The man just bluntly, uh, bluffly chased me away from the office. I left. On the fifth day, the man was removed from the office. And the man died out of sickness that you cannot just give a name to. Okay, now tell us, there's something we want to learn from all this. Now, when you have encounter with people like this, and uh, it appears these, are, these people are the ones that actually of, uh, did the wrong thing by offending you, refusing to do what they were supposed to do. So if anyone, you have an encounter with someone like that, and eventually the person now have a change of mind and decide to do the right thing, would there be such consequence? Would, would anything happen to the person? The person doing the right thing within the time frame will save that person. But if the person passed that time frame, even a day, the person will still have lower consequences. Mm. Okay, so what you are saying in essence is that, what, what, I, what you are saying in essence is that if you have an encounter with someone and the person has not done you anything wrong, nothing will happen to the person. If the person haven't done anything wrong, one thing is that I will not offend you. That's the thing. I will never offend, I've ne I don't offend them, but don't offend me. Okay. Even in my home, in my family, don't offend me. Even my husband, don't offend me. I, at times when we are smiling, I will tell him, stop offending me, so that your ways will be open. Mm. Mm. Okay, so can you also tell us what other examples of such like all those powers in your body what the devil has used you to destroy others through those powers can you also give us any other instance like you're going out and uh, meeting other people okay mm -hmm. like uh, if i go to the, those ones uh, th this one concerns the church because so many churches in the world today is not founded on the genuity of christ if i come to your church and you are standing on a quicksand. You have a negative power behind you. On the physical, you are pretending to be serving God, deceiving people. Immediately I step into your church, you will be exposed. So can you tell us how this happens? I will give you an instance of it. There was a church that my husband was attending, the first church that he attended first. Because he never attended church when I got married to him, newly. But when he decided to attend a church, he attended one church. The day I came to visit him, I went into that church. I saw the man. The minute the man looked at me, we had an eye contact. The man jumped up, shouted, came to shook me hand and was scratching my hand. I removed my hand. I kept quiet. Who, who was the man? A pastor. Okay. So he called himself a pastor. Okay. You know? So, when he did that, I wanted to inform my husband, but I said no. 
Let me use that man and teach him a lesson. So at a time, another time I came to that church, the man started misbehaving. Shout, saying that if you want to have the spirit of God, come and drop hanky here, come and drop uh, over tea here, you know. He started messing up. At the end of it, in fact, the man today had no stable church, no stable home, because the, the wife, the first wife died mistrustly. After one month, he got married. You know, that spirit of lust in him exposed him. Okay. Another one, uh, 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 three pastors that were attending, uh, do I mention? Okay, no. So what, what, what we want to ask you now, madam, tell us in your home, in the first place, you know, you said many men came to you, and uh, because of this power in your eyes to seduce them, they all come to you, but then you refuse them. Tell us, how then did you manage to get your husband, and tell us what has been happening in the home ever since? Uh, my husband came, and my husband had his own powers. That's the thing. When he came, Though he was the smallest among the men, in terms of physical things, you can see, in terms of wealth. But because of that power with him, and again, to tame that power in him, to tame the power in him, I accepted him. Hmm. Okay, so has there been any time you had an encounter with him, or maybe offended you, and what? Severally. Okay, can you give us one or two instances? He had offended me severally. One, he taught my Bible, and when he taught that Bible, because that time he didn't believe in Christ, he normally abused uh, church people, that uh, it's only sick people that go to church, because with that power in me, my mother took me to so many places for deliverance, mm. to so many churches. So to me, when I, I started, when I know him, I continued with that. But he stopped me from attending church himself. So all those places your mother took you to in search of deliverance, what happened each time you get to those places? Yeah, nothing really happened. Hmm. Nothing really happened. They would try something like deliverance, but none of it was as strong as to pull me out. Because you can know the power you have to pull out a stronger force okay. and the the, the 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 thing that is disturbing me you know claim to be the owner of all powers it's not just a uh, little little demons that you can cast out okay so now tell us in your kingdom over there how did you used to see yourself in what form in what appearance and what are the things that surrounded you in that demonic kingdom i am a man that was why in the dream women come to me and I performed as a man. In, I never had a man sleep with me in the dream. Rather, women come to me to sleep with me. Mm. Okay. So tell us, uh, because of time, what happened when you came last Sunday? Right. Let me start by saying how I knew the prophet. The first day I saw the prophet, I saw him on the telly at my seamstress shop. When I saw him on the telly, I shouted, because as you're seeing him, he's a giant in the spirit, a very big giant in the spirit. He, Prophet T.B. Joshua, I'm saying, not other pastors, Prophet T.B. Joshua is a giant in the spirit, clothed by cloud of fire. When he's moving, the fire will surround him. It is impenetrable. Nothing can pull him out. Nothing can touch him there. So when I saw him that day on the telly, I am not seeing the man. I saw that cloud. I came back and told my husband, there was this pastor I saw on the telly. I am going to seek him out. He will be the solution to my problem and to our problem. That was the genesis of how I started coming here. I came here to seek for total annihilation, extrication of those spirits, of those powers, because I don't like it. Mm. So you two, were, you got fed up of those I got fed up powers. with the troubles, because mm. setbacks, today you step up and you have four steps backward. Mm. You make a giant try today, 
and you see yourself falling back even further than where you came from. So with all the position, queen nothing of queens, was coming up, queen of nothing. the universe, you could not achieve no anything. No peace, no joy. In my position, I am supposed to be a rich woman mm. at the level I am. But I have nothing. Does it mean Today Satan, they will remove me from my office. Does it mean Satan have nothing good to offer? Nothing. Mm. Completely nothing. Okay, so when you came here, what happened? How, what, how were you captured at the end of the day? I came here and I continued coming. And you know God's time is not man's time. It happened that last Sunday was the D-Day. And when the man of God came out to preach, the spirit was arrested, which eventually you saw how the deliverance was ended up. And I had myself free and totally free. Before then, I had cis menstruation for many months. My stomach was as big as this. Even my husband was uh, joking with me, saying that you are going to have uh, an Atuanya baby. You know, in Igbo, baby that you are not expecting is an Atuanya baby. You know, I'm going to have a baby that we are not expecting. We are making fun of it. But in me, I know there is a problem. It's no pregnancy. So when eventually I came here, after the deliverance, I went back to the hotel, and the mercy started flowing in full force. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? And I am free today. I am totally free. Mm. I am very free. And I believe my children that the spirits have infected one way or the other. Especially my daughter. Very rebellious. She is of a tiger spirit. Mm. She fights the father. Mm. Mm. One day she was fighting the father. I went to hold her. She slapped me two times. Mm. Wow. She fights. She claims that she will poison the father to death. That spirit made mess of her. To the extent that she couldn't even complete her education now. Okay. So since your deliverance last week, can you tell us other areas of your life that have been transformed, the changes, and your dreams? Do you still see those things that you used to see in your dream, your relationship with your husband after your deliverance? Tell us. After the deliverance, I started seeing him as a young man. I started appreciating his presence in my life. Hmm. Before... The only thing that fills my heart, today I will be happy with him. Tomorrow I will remember all he did that is wrong. Mm. I will cry. And I pray that I cannot cry because I know crying, shedding tears, affects the person that offends me. So, that since that deliverance, oh, I'll, I'm so happy. I love him. Shall we clap for Jesus Christ? <laughs> Thank you. So... We're coming back to listen to your word of advice, but for a moment, we want to also hear from your husband. So, sir, so because of time, can you just tell us briefly, how do you feel seeing that your wife now is completely delivered? What was your experience with her ever since you met her in the past? Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. Uh, I thank God. I thank God. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. Your name? My name is Patrick Ngbebu. This is my wife. And uh, this uh, spirit has really tormented us from uh, the time we met to the marriage at, up to now. It's been up down, up, down, done all that is of man to excel in our career, but none, it's not working. But uh, God's time, they say, is the best. After the deliverance, it's been harvest of joy, harvest of joy. But before the, the deliverance, the, the, the spirit made her ex. ex seriously authoritative it must be her way or nothing holds so you mean she was a man in the house more than a man okay mm. more than a man so she will give you orders and her orders must stand if you don't do her own 
and the anger will come. And when the anger comes, poverty will follow. Sickness will follow. Everybody will be on the run. So best, since after the deliverance, my beautiful wife is here. She has returned. And uh, we, we are enjoying her. Shall we clap for Jesus Christ? So can you just tell us now what, what do you do for a living and tell us how you felt all this way with your personality having this kind of trouble, catastrophe lying in your home? Yeah. You see, God, when God has a, a program. He finds a way to accomplish that program. I believe that my marrying her has God's hand. Because as at the time I went for her, she has said it here that I was the least of the men that came. Those men who came and stayed on the bench and do what I know follow them all. Me, I came and I conquered right away. I didn't waste one month. So, and it was God's program. So that God that started the, uh, the, this marriage has equally been protecting it. Mm. With all those crises, we've been trudging on. Mm. Trudging on. Uh, but uh, one basic thing I must not fail to mention is this, is anger. This, the anger. I remember in 1996, I was contesting for election, ch the chairmanship of my local government. I know we had one quarrel that day, we fought. After that fighting, she cried and said, don't contest this election, you will not win election in, you, in your life in the next 10 years. And... Um, I went ahead, contested the election, wasted my resources. I, my name was not even mentioned. Your name wasn't even mentioned? It was not even mentioned. Just because you offended her? Yeah. And she spoke a word? But miraculously, 10 years thereafter, I was called from my home to become a member of the House of Assembly in my place. Wow. So After 10 years? After as... that 10 years, as she, she said. Hmm. But I, all this while, you didn't know that she wasn't the one talking or doing I all never... the I never knew. You didn't will, know that there were some forces I will, and. I will quarrel, I will fight, I will beat. But I didn't know. I was just punishing my wife. That the enemy was somewhere else. What do you do for a living, sir? I am a lawyer. A lawyer? Yeah. Hmm. So we thank God. So tell us, since after your wife's deliverance, since the man of God touched her and delivered her to the power of the living Jesus Christ, what has been the changes you have seen in your wife what are the transformations you have you know experienced i've seen her very calm the beauty is radiating she's happier she's closer than she used to be mm. she's more submissive now before she should be the ogre and me i go to follow uh, so but now she's quite submissive can you give us example for example, before now, if we come to a place like this, you give us the two seats to sit. She would want me to sit inside. She would be at the end. <laughs> but surprisingly, last Wednesday you invited us here. You showed us a place to sit down. She said, she now entered and said, Daddy, sit here. I looked at her and smiled because it has never happened. It has never happened. It has never happened. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? Well, for those who are saved, those who are delivered, signs shall follow them. And that is, those are the signs. Deliverance without signs is deliverance without evidence. So the husband is telling us now those signs that show that she is completely delivered. Shall we put our hands together beautifully for the King of Glory? There are more of the signs. More of the signs. That uh, Sunday we came, we were four two of my children, herself and myself. After the deliverance, we came, my daughter was having a very uh, serious allergy, she was allergic to dust. And this continuous catar had been there for more than a year. So after the deliverance, the, the nose started dropping water seriously. But now she's okay. Hallelujah. And me too, I was stooling blood. I had very acute... Uh, a uh, pile and I was even that Sunday I still serious blood here but after the, the deliverance cleared I'm shall we put our hands together for Jesus 
So we thank God Almighty for your life and also Madam for this great deliverance. We know that the past is over. Jesus Christ enters our lives to put an end to our past and give birth to our future. Now Madam is a new person in Christ Jesus and we want to encourage you to stay true to our Lord Jesus Christ who has delivered you. Those who are delivered by Christ's word must be ruled by his word. So make the word of God the standard for your life and this deliverance you have received will be permanent in Jesus name. Once again let us clap for Jesus Christ. Nous voulons entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme avec son mari qui a reçu sa délivrance dimanche dernier. Elle a dit qu'elle a été partout chercher des délivrances sans trouver la délivrance à son problème. Elle a dit que tout a commencé lorsqu'elle avait l'âge de 9 ans où un esprit est apparu physiquement dans sa chambre. Elle a dit qu'elle devait le servir et faire tout ce qu'il qu lui commandait de faire. Et c'est comme cela qu'elle a été possédée de l'esprit de reine, de rivière et de l'esprit de géant. Elle a dit que c'est elle qui commandait son mari dans la maison, qu'elle était comme un homme. Mais dans le monde spirituel, c'est un homme que lorsque même dans ses rêves, elle couchait avec des femmes étant un homme dans le, dans le monde spirituelle. Elle a dit que quelque chose qu'elle disait euh, se réalisait à cause de la puissance qui était en elle, que c'est elle qui conduisait le mariage, c'est elle qui, qui dirigeait toutes choses. Quand même quand elle allait dans les églises et qu'elle regardait le pasteur sur la chair, celui qui s'appelait un pasteur réalisait que celui-là n'était pas un pasteur qui possédait certains esprits. Et lorsque sa présence était dans l'église, le pasteur était toujours dérouté et dans la confusion. Et c'est comme cela qu'elle qu commençait à voir que le pasteur n'était pas un vrai pasteur, la puissance de Dieu n'était pas avec lui. Elle a dit que cette puissance vraiment l'a rendue à, à rien du tout, qu'elle a, a vécu dans la pauvreté, dans la régression, dans les difficultés, qu'un jour elle est en haut, de le jour d'après ils sont en bas, qu'il n'y avait aucune paix dans la famille, que qu'elle a commencé à chercher même sa délivrance sans pouvoir trouver quelqu'un qui pouvait la délivrer à cause de cette puissance qui était en elle, jusqu'à ce qu'un jour elle vienne dans la boutique de sa soeur, qu'elle regarde des malades télévision et qu'elle commence à crier en regardant à l'homme de Dieu prophétique de choix en disant que le feu du Saint-Esprit est sur ses noms, que c'est vraiment un géant dans le monde spirituel, que le feu de l'Esprit de Dieu est toujours sur lui et autour de lui, que personne ne peut le pénétrer, que personne ne peut le faire tomber. Et c'est comme cela qu'elle a dit à ce mari, je crois que c'est là que j'irai pour avoir ma délivrance. Elle est venue à la synagogue église de toute nation, comme le voyons sur l'écran. L'homme de Dieu a prié pour elle. Elle a reçu sa délivrance et aujourd'hui elle revient donner son témoignage, rendant grâce à Dieu qu'elle est complètement libre. Elle n'a plus, plus de mauvais rêves, plus de puissance à son actif. Elle est complètement libre. Son mariage maintenant est rétabli. Le mari maintenant a dit qu'elle aime son mari. Elle n'avait pas d'amour auparavant car c'était l'homme de la maison. Et maintenant elle aime son mari. Son mari aussi vous dit qu'il voit beaucoup de signes que maintenant sa femme, sa vraie femme est de retour et rend toute la gloire à Dieu pour sa délivrance. Escuchamos un maravilloso testimonio de liberación. Acabamos de escuchar la experiencia de esta mujer que nos cuenta que desde los nueve años de edad empezó a tener ataques espirituales, empezó a tener visitas de una mujer que le decía que ella quería que fuera su colega, su socia, y la invitó a hacer varias cosas. Eso fue a los nueve años. Luego a los once años tuvo un encuentro con un gigante que le decía que ella le pertenecía, que él quería que ella trabajara para él, y de y, y, y la única forma en la que ella podía satisfacer a este hombre que se le apareció físicamente en su habitación era que ella se fuera a tener relaciones con hombres, con mujeres y también le dio un poder en sus ojos que cada vez que viera hombres a mujeres pudiera traerlos para cumplir su propósito. Nos cuenta también esta mujer que de, desde entonces, desde muy pequeña, empezó a tener limitación, eh, fracaso, problemas, también tenía un espíritu de enojo, eh, un, un temperamento muy fuerte que acabó su carrera y su vida familiar. Ella nos cuenta que vino finalmente, eh, ella escuchó acerca de TV Joshua y ella dijo, yo quiero ir allá porque sé que es el único lugar donde podré ser libre. Así que finalmente ya vino el domingo pasado, recibió la administración del agua de la mañana, luego recibió la, eh, la gracia de, de recibir oración por parte del profeta TV Joshua y este espíritu se manifestó, un espíritu ancestral, un espíritu de dragón y de reina y finalmente fue expulsado de su vida, incluso su esposo nos dice que todo el comportamiento que ella tenía anteriormente ha cambiado completamente para la gloria de Dios, su matrimonio se ha restaurado y ella sabe que lo mejor aún está por venir, continuamos Let's put our hands together for wonderful Jesus Christ Yes, we're still listening to life-changing testimonies and we have time for just one more case that will lift your faith in Jesus the Deliverer. So right now, watch your screen and see what took place last week when a woman was delivered from darkness into God's wonderful light. So watch your screen. As the evangelist ministered the new morning water to the congregants at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, 
demons are exposed against their will and begin to display their ugly nature under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Where the light of God is, darkness has no hiding place. The presence of Jesus Christ is on the scene to uproot the ugly and hateful spirit behind their disappointments, afflictions, and setbacks in life. Watch how God Almighty uses the medium of the new morning water to set this woman free from the ugly and hateful spirit in her life. Who are you? I'm the queen now. You have to ask me again. Now, the queen, what are you pushing her to do? Hey, all her life she has been a prostitute. She cannot be any other thing than prostitution now. Okay, when did you start prostitution in her life? Right from when she started her own, from secondary school, but she entered it through her own. When my mother was looking for a child, oh! How old is she now? Hey! How old is she now? More than 40 something years, eh? Now you wicked Smoking. bitch. Smoking! Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, how old? And how old? Hey. How old have you destroyed her? Hey, many ways. She cannot even do anything good. She has not done anything good in her life since she was born up there now. No. Nothing has come out from her. Nothing good come from her. Oh. Now, how many I of you in the body? We are more than a spirit of anger lost. So oh, I like men a lot. Oh. Hey. 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 Now, hey. Now, you wicked spirits. Now, you wicked spirits. Use up! Now listen, hey. what have you done to her family? Hey, she has no family. Her, her, she's an orphan. No. Who is this woman beside her? Eh? Look there, who is she? Who? Who is this woman? Who? She? Yes. I don't know her. Then. You don't know her? Eh. She's my sister. Okay, she's your sister? Yes. So what can you say about her character? She normally receives uh, moral calls. And because of attitude, she lost her mom. She ran away from the house for many years. So what has she been doing all those years? Prostitution. I don't know. Yay! Sickness! 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 Uh -huh. sure that nothing good comes out from her. She cannot do anything good except die, death, anything you can call death. That's what she is good for. So leave her alone. Now hey. you wicked spirits, all of you, hey. take your sickness, your wickedness, anywhere there's darkness located hey. in this body, get out! You must go. Today is your end. Jesus Christ is more than you. Now you must go. Be free. Be free. Get out. 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 Be free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You are free. The Son of God sets you free. You are free indeed. Madam, open your eyes. Rise up. Jesus Christ has delivered you. Liberación por el medio del nuevo. Agua de la mañana. Gloria a Jesucristo. Madam, how are you? Huh? What happened to you? Where am I? You don't know where you are? No. You don't know where you are? No. This is Synagogue Church for Nations, known as the Arena of Liberty. Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! I'm now free. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> Madame, congratulations. You are free. Jesus has set you free through the means of the morning water. Amen. Madame Let's put our hands together for wonderful Jesus Christ. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, as you're watching testimonies of others, remember your own testimony is just a moment away. Do you believe that? If you believe that, say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus, is a response from a happy heart. Remember that the new morning water was the medium that was used to separate this woman from a life of bondage, a life of destruction. And that same ministration is coming to your life today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, madam, you're welcome. We want to rejoice with you. Please tell us your name and who are the people with you? Emmanuel, church, good morning. My name is Chidema Gloria Ifekweze, and these are my, they are my families. This is my sister, my aunt, and my, that's her child, Cynthia, and those are my families. Emmanuel, my name is Chidema Gloria Ifekweze, I'm 43 years old. 
and all my life. I've never done anything good in my life except prostitution, following men, one man to another, jumping from one bed to another. And it all started when I was in secondary school because I was in boarding house. And that was girls plus boys school, but all the same. Girls were different, boys were different. Started with girls. From there, I started having dreams. Where I was being in the dream, a man will come to me, one giant man from nowhere will come to me. I'll be making love to me. From that making love, I'll be it's kind of having sensation in me. When I wake up, I'll find myself being in loss. I'll start looking for men to sleep with. It all continues like that. At a time, I could not hold myself again. How to run away from secondary school to clubs, going out with friends, enjoying myself, going from club to club, jumping from one bed to another. Sometimes, okay, now at a time, my mom noticed that I was no more concentrating in school again. Teachers will complain. Everybody will complain. It's not for me. I'll still go back to the where I was living before because I thought it was a good life. And the man will still come to me in the dream. And the man will still come to me in the dream and say, don't stop, continue. When I wake up, I'll still continue doing what I'm doing. I think it was a way of life. Not knowing I was killing myself, both, uh, both uh, this is spiritually and physically. But I still thank God for everything. I was still alive. I still came out again, jumping from clubs, going one way or the other. Even when I had so many accidents, so many dead points on the road, there was this one that we call dead. You will see you are dead in front. After I was, I will be well again. The next second, the next day, you will still see me either in Abuja. Going from, I didn't travel to Kotonu, going from one place to another, smoking, smoking. I even smoke, I drink, I'm even into lesbianism itself. Because, because sometimes, some men will say they don't want, like sometimes we will be like four or five in a room. Some men will come and say, ah, we girls should naked ourselves and be making love to ourselves. We will all gather, all, all in the name of, we are looking for money. We will all gather making love to ourselves, fornicating, being naked in front of the men. The men would come and make love to us, all because of money. At the time, everything was okay. Everything was just being useless. I left country school. I now went on my own. My mom would call me. If my dad would call me, I would not listen. Because the man I thought was my dad was even my step uh, dad. I never knew that he was not really my biological father, that he was my stepfather. So now when he... He now finds that this lady, this girl, as well as uh, cannot be on control level, that she's, she's now out of control, that like cannot control herself again. He now went and called my mom, that my mom should take me back to where I came from, that I cannot take this thing any longer, that he's tired. They now took me to my village, that's where I knew my uh, father, after how many years, because of prostitution. Uh, they now took me there, and I came back. See, it did not stop there. I still continued going to a lesbian, smoking, drink, because of this prostitution, I now went into smoking, I now went into smoking, drinking, it was cocaine, I can even make cocaine for you, Steph. I smoke cocaine, I smoke drugs, I smoke cigarettes, I smoke wee wee, name it, that, all of them, name them, I smoke them, I drink them, uh -huh. then at the time, how, at the time, things continue to tell that I nearly died, that was the, is this the last gunshot? No, it was the last gunshot. After too many gunshots or so many accidents, the last one was I was traveling. The last one was uh -huh, I was with a man's house in a man's house. Yes, uh, 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 yes, I was in my man's house, and that man now called me that I should come and meet him. Because of the money was involved, he was bigger than the one I was staying with, and I ran off that man's house to go and meet him. Along the way, I now had a, a, a lift. Along our way from Taco to that airport road, Taco Junction to where I now had an accident. They are nearly, they are nearly cut off my ear and my face. That, that, that had me paralyzed my face like this. Still, after going to my sister's house, taking my drugs, after the hospital and everything, instead of me to go to stay and change, for where they didn't even give me 
another change of pattern and I went back to prostitution again. So you mean this spirit of prostitution was so much in your life that for more than 30 years you could not stop doing prostitution. You experienced many accidents, even to a point where the armed robber shot you, you were taken to the hospital and from the hospital you still went back to the prostitution, is that right? Very right, because I was not the one doing that. It was that spirit, that spirit man that was in me that was doing that, pushing me. If you say I have series of abortion, I even tell people lies that look, I have a child. Whereas I don't have a child. I don't have a child. I was just doing like that, just because of my age, I was still doing it non stop. Uh, finally. So it was even last week, Sunday, that my sister, that's my. That's her mom, which is my auntie, now said enough is enough, that she cannot stay with me any longer. If I don't change that, she will not go to stay with me again. Now, now brought one that said we should come to Snagov Church of All Nations. Although I've known Snagov for a long time, but... So you mean that from the hotel doing prostitution for more than 40 years, it got to a point where your sister said, if you don't change, I will take you to the Synagogue Church for the Nations for your deliverance. And that's how you came here last week, is no, that right? No, no. If I don't change, she will shake me out of her house completely. And she will disown me as a sister, not coming back to her again. Uh, that's why I now considered coming here to avoid trouble. Not really that I really want to come and change, just to avoid trouble before... So we've heard it from her that just to avoid being chased out of her own house, after doing prostitution for more than 40 years, she came here last week to the Synagogue Church for Nations and God arrested her. Can you tell us what happened when the morning water was, the new morning water was ministered on you in Jesus' name? What was your experience? What my experience was that, what happened was that, that we are, that now, it was evangelist, when she came, she was, she was trying the morning water, and when she came to me, she started the morning water. The thing was so hot on me, the fire was so hot on me, that I could not resist again. I started shouting, shouting, fire, fire, fire. That was all I knew. Until then she was watching that told me what really happened, that I don't, I don't know the rest. So we can see on the screen exactly how that deliverance took place, where that evil spirit that caused her to do prostitution her whole life was cast out of her in Jesus' name. Madam, can you tell us, ever since your deliverance, what have the changes been in your life? Yes, I wasted my years, 43 years now, no child, no issue, no money, no nothing, no house, nothing, nothing. All my life has been in a hotel. I wasted my years, wasted my years. But still, for God, I still thank God for everything because that day he delivered me. I slept like a baby. Those evil men don't come to me again. I don't eat in the dream again. I don't make love in the dream again. Everything was okay. And that smoking, that lesbianism, I don't even see men as anything again. Everything just went off just like that. Just thank God. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. She said immediately after her deliverance, she started crying, realizing that all those years were wasted years. But now that urge for drinking, smoking, prostitution has gone completely. And we believe with you that now you've been delivered in Christ's word, that God will restore to your wasted years in Jesus' name. Amen. What can you say about the new morning water that God used to deliver you? My brethren, Emmanuel, this morning water, if you don't have it, look for it. If not for this morning water, I wouldn't have been alive today. I wouldn't have been delivered today. Look for it. Look for this morning water. You make use of it. Because with God, all things are possible. If not for God that disturbed me through this morning water, I wouldn't have been here today giving you my testimony or delivering or saying my testimony to you people. So this morning water is the bomb. Me, I call it bomb because it worked for me and it will work for you if you believe and have faith in it. Amen. Estamos escuchando el increíble testimonio de esta mujer que nos comenta de que por muchos años ella ha sufrido de prostitución debido a un espíritu que quería destruir su vida desde que es muy joven. Ella se prostituía tanto con mujeres como con hombres y ella tenía esa necesidad, ese deseo de prostituirse y por ende ella terminaba yendo a clubes nocturnos donde ella fumaba, tomaba alcohol y también drogaba. Continuamos con este gran testimonio. 
So, madam, you said that for more than 40 years you were doing prostitution, sm uh, smoking, drinking. Do you mean that after your deliverance, now, if they give you a cigarette to smoke, you don't have urge to smoke anymore? I don't even have urge for men, talk less of smoking. That's, I don't have urge for men. I don't have to have me urge for drink or smoking. I don't have urge for it. Can you just explain for us to understand something that was inside your body for more than 40 years? How did that come out of your body? What was your experience during your deliverance? Did you see that spirit leaving you or how did it come out of you? After my deliverance, everything, something like, came out from like a giant man that still came, came out from me, bam. So everything just went off like a blank, bam, like that. Nothing like that again. Nothing like smoking, drinking, again. everything just went off like that, just like that. I now read my Bible, pray to God. Everything just went normal. I just thank God for my deliverance. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ, the deliverer. So, madam, we want to thank you for this wonderful deliverance, and we want to rejoice with you and encourage you that now you've been delivered by Christ's word. Continue to be ruled by that word, and make that word the standard for your life to maintain this wonderful deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. The incredible testimony of this woman who tells us that she was suffering from a spirit that she wanted to destroy for more than 40 years. She tells us that this spirit was inside of her body, and that made her prostitute for 30 years. This spirit of prostitution that she had, made her go to nocturnal clubs, made her go to different places in search of men and women to sleep with. She tells us that she has been involved in different types of accidents, and there was an accident that she was suffering from where she was going to her face, and that was the accident that she was going to her face, but she continued and continued with the prostitution that she was going to her face. Seguía en búsqueda de hombres y de mujeres, pero nos comenta que su tía, con quien ella vive, estando cansada de esta situación, estando cansada de este tipo de necesidad que ella tenía de estar con hombres y mujeres, le había dicho de que si no cambiaba iba a dejarla fuera de la casa. Nos comenta que desde entonces ella acudió a la sinagoga e iglesia de todas las naciones, ella asistió al servicio del domingo y recibió la administración del nuevo agua de la mañana. Ella recibió la administración del nuevo agua de la mañana y el espíritu de ella se manifestó. Y nos comenta que ella sentía fuego, nos comenta que ella sentía algo en su cuerpo. Y desde entonces ella ha sido libre, ya no tiene deseos de fumar, no tiene deseos de tomar alcohol o de drogarse, ni de prostituirse. Le da la gloria a Jesucristo, ya que luego de 30 años ella es al fin libre de este espíritu que la estaba destruyendo. Continuamos. Nous voulons entendre le témoignage de cette femme qui a vécu pendant 30 ans de sa vie dans la prostitution à des degrés très, 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 très élevés. Elle a vécu une vie de luxure en fumant la cocaïne, les drogues dures, la cigarette. Elle est de club en club se prostituant tous les jours de sa vie pendant presque 30 ans. C'est une vie complètement d'échec, une vie de souffrance, une vie d'abandon. Elle s'est livrée à la fornication, rencontre des hommes à chaque jour. Tous les gens de sa vie, et même ça a failli lui coûter la vie, cette vie qu'elle menait. Elle a eu plusieurs accidents qui sont arrivés, qui auraient pu la défigurer, la tuer, mais Dieu dans sa miséricorde l'a épargné. Elle a vécu ainsi cette vie dans la souffrance, ne sachant comment s'en sortir, jusqu'au jour où le Dieu de miséricorde a permis qu'elle vienne dans l'arène de la liberté, où la nouvelle eau du matin a été aspergée sur elle. Elle a dit qu'elle ne pouvait plus résister, il y avait une force en elle qui criait « le feu, le feu, le feu ». Et le feu du Saint-Esprit est descendu sur elle, et cet esprit qui l'a poussé à être comme Sodom et Gomorre, Dieu l'a lié et chassé au nom de Jésus-Christ. Dès qu'elle a été livrée, libérée, délivrée, elle a retrouvé son existence normale, son attitude normale, sa personnalité normale. Maintenant, elle ne fait plus ces choses immorales, elle lit sa Bible, elle comprend la parole de Dieu, elle vit une existence de sanctification, elle veut plaire à Dieu son Créateur. C'est une personne nouvelle, et son passé est complètement révolu, elle rend gloire à Dieu, elle la va restaurer par sa gloire et sa puissance. Egypt to one country, 
you can get it one place or another. We want to tell you, don't let them deceive you. There's nothing like that. Everything is still in the process. And like man of God promised, according to the word that came forth from him, that when it is ready, when it is finished, it is the partners all over the world that will be the first to receive the new money water so let us take note of that and as we do so god almighty will bless us in jesus name we have listened
not for sale and salvation is free so please do not allow yourself to be deceived we are saying that so that you can know that once the ministration starts and you are seeing the mighty power don't get anxious too anxious to want to have the new money water and thereby you run into the hand of those who will defraud you it is not available for now when it is available the man of god will make it very clear and how it will get to partners all around the world so let's take note of that and please drivers with Give a tap to your neighbor and tell him, well, today, is today is my day. I can't hear you say it loud and clear, today is my day. You know, the man of God used to say, the viewers all around the world, you are here and we are there. Any moment from this time, the man of God is going to come into our midst and we are going to experience that wonderful prayers for the viewers all around the world. And that extraordinary mighty power of god that will move during the mass prayer that will be offered by the man of god prophet tb joshua last week for those who attend the service they can testify to the mighty things that god did in the life of the people most especially viewers all around the world so wherever you are whatever is your time zone please just take focus on emmanuel tv and any moment from this time we pray that god grant the man of god the grace to be live on emmanuel tv so that they can offer that mass prayer that will bring deliverance that will bring breakthrough that will bring all of god blessing into your home into your family into everything that i has to do with you in Jesus name and we also want to remind us as we said earlier that the new money water is not available now so don't get deceived by the news going on on various internet and various sites that the money water you need to bring money you need no there's nothing like that so please take note of that thank you very much hearing so many powerful testimonies but we still have another life experience that we want to take our time to listen to we know that the synagogue church of all nations here is a place of refuge for people all over the world and during the week here at the synagogue church of all nations we have so many people coming in search of refuge and relief with various circumstances and situations and we are going to take the time to listen to one such individual who came to the synagogue church of all nations during during this last week now those of us who have been watching Emmanuel TV will be familiar with the fact that prophet TB Joshua has been taking care and assisting deportees who have been taken from various countries back to Nigeria helping them to start their lives afresh and this week it, you may have seen the news here in Nigeria that hundreds of deportees arrived from the nation of Libya and many of them rushed here to the synagogue church of all nations to seek for refuge and help to start their lives afresh after many traumatic experiences abroad so amidst the people that came to the synagogue church of all nations during the week is a young man and we want to invite him to come forward right now because there is a life experience that he wants to share that we believe there are many valuable lessons to be learned from so let's open our hearts right now we're going to listen to this life experience any minute from now
Vamos a escuchar en breve esta experiencia de vida que van a compartir en un momento. Seguimos con más testimonios poderosos para poder elevar nuestra fe y llevarla a otro nivel. Continúe conectado con Emanuel TV. Nous allons bientôt écouter un témoignage d'expérience de la vie qui va nous édifier. Restez à l'écoute et ouvrez votre cœur pour voir ce que Dieu peut faire dans la vie des personnes. Rappelez-vous, Jésus-Christ est venu pour mettre fin à notre passé et donner naissance à notre avenir. Il n'y a aucun problème qu'il ne puisse résoudre. Demeurez de la foi et écoutons ce que ce jeune homme a partagé.